Então, o compêndio da Lexia Divina é uma forma simples, prática e acessível de ter na tua mão o resumo de toda a oração de um ano litúrgico. Com esse livro, você não vai perder a tua oração. Você vai registrar dia após dia o conteúdo da tua oração. E a oração vai se transformar em vida, vai se transformar em decisões, em práticas concretas. Essa palavra é tão poderosa que um só versículo pode mudar toda a sua vida. E o que é a Lexio Divina? A Lexio Divina, como o nome diz, é uma leitura orante da Palavra de Deus. Cinco passos, muito simples, e a leitura é algo objetivo. O que é que esses textos falam hoje, concretamente? Lê com calma, lê tranquilamente, lê várias vezes essas três leituras. Depois da leitura você tem a meditação. Então a meditação é um movimento de entrar dentro de nós, onde Deus habita, no mais profundo de nós, e escutar o que é que Deus quer me falar a mim, naquilo que eu vivo hoje, com essa palavra. A graça da oração. Se Deus me fala, eu respondo. Uma pessoa que ama, responde à pessoa amada. E o quarto passo, a contemplação, que transpassa o teu coração e, e torna o teu dia todo diferente. E essa palavra deve ficar ruminando no nosso coração ao longo de todo o dia. E o último passo, a resolução. Qual a decisão que eu tomo face a essa palavra? Na escuta do verbo. Hello everyone, welcome to this Thursday, August 5th. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth of Seas of the Word Community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us today. For the readings of today, we will read Numbers chapter 20, verses 1 to 13. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 95 and the gospel is from St. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 23. You can grab your Bible and we can start the reading of the Word of God for today. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Israelites, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month and the people stayed in Kadesh. Miriam died, th died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, so they gathered together against Moses and against Aaron. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Would that we have died when our kindred died before the Lord? Why have you brought the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness for us and our livestock to die here? Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to bring us to this stretch, to bring us to this wretched place? Is it no place for grain, or figs, or wines, or pomegranates? There is no water to drink. Then Moses and Aaron went away from the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting. They fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the staff, and assemble the congregation, you and your brother Aaron, and come in the rock before their eyes to yield its water. Thus you shall bring water out of the rock for them. Thus you shall provide drink for the congregation and for the livestock. So Moses took the staff from before the hand, as before the Lord, as he had commanded him. Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Listen, you rebels, shall we, shall we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to, to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust in me, to show my holiness before the eyes of the Israelites. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. These are the waters of Meribah, where the people of Israel quarreled with the Lord 
and by which he showed his holiness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This chapter 20 of Numbers is always interesting to me. We heard that Moses was a, was a humble person, was the most humble man on the face of the earth. Moses always tried to be obedient to the Lord, doing what the Lord asked of him, doing what the Lord asked of him. But here we see that people are complaining again, food and water, why were they in the desert, in the wilderness, and so on. And Moses and Aaron go to the uh, tent of meeting where they meet the Lord and they prostrated and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Get your stuff and strike once the rock and give the people water to drink. Moses get up with Aaron, gather the assembly and then strike twice the rock. And God said, you did not trust me, Moses. God only asked for, for him to strike once and he did it twice. And because of that, he, was not go he did not see the promised land. He did not enter the promised land. The Lord would tell him, you will see the promised land from afar, but you shall not enter the promised land. So Moses died before they arrived in the promised land. We could say that it is unfair. It is unfair. But the Lord knows the hearts. What sacred scripture tells us is that it's what the Lord says to Moses, because you did not trust in me to show my holiness before the eyes of the Israelites. You shall not enter into the, 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 into the land. Moses was humble, but he was very weak. Moses many times wanted to give up, but he, he didn't. So he was a faithful servant, but he was weak as well, as we all are. And here we see that in this action here, he lost, he, he missed the possibility of entering the promised land. And this is an advice to us saying, be careful. You can be faithful your whole life, not perfect, but faithful your whole life. But you need to keep trusting in the Lord and doing what He's telling you. Because we can lose grace at any point in our lives. It's not because I'm a religious sister that I'm having heaven already. No, I'm in the way. I'm in the path. But I can lose grace if I don't keep trusting in the Lord. If I don't have my eyes fixed in Him, I can miss grace. I can not be in heaven one day. So Moses is an example to us that someone that we honor, that we see how amazing he is, but we can see where he failed, not trusting in the Lord completely. The responsorial Psalm, Psalm 95 says, O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. O oh, that day you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day of Massa in the wilderness. When your ancestors tested me, put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. And the gospel today from St. Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to 23 says, When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the, the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah and still others, Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. The Lord said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Christ, 
the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone he was the Messiah, the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to him, Go behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How can that be? In one moment, Jesus praised Peter, saying, Peter, you are saying this not inspired by human thoughts, but you're being inspired by the Father, by the Holy Spirit. They are speaking through you. That's why you say that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. So upon you, I will build my church. So Jesus gives this, this, great, uh, this great mission and vocation to Peter, saying, you are the rock. You are the first one. You are the one whom I built my church. So our first Pope. So he gives this honor. But in the last second, Peter becomes a stumbling block. Jesus called him Satan. Go behind me, Satan. How can that be? It's just like Moses in the first reading. It's to show us that we are weak. In one moment, we can be full of faith and full of right inspirations from the Lord. But in the next second, we can lose everything. We are saved by the, the precious body and blood of our Lord. But we are not saved. So Jesus gave us salvation. But we need to acquire salvation. We need to have salvation. Salvation is given. But I need to accept it. And I need to work for it. That's why we are saved. Yes, we are. Jesus did everything that was needed for salvation. But that doesn't mean that we are all in heaven because of that. We need to work for salvation second after second. Not only day after day, second after second. Peter made this great profession of faith and received the keys to open, to, to bind things between heaven and earth. But next, in the next second, Jesus says to him, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Where are we setting our minds? Where are our minds and hearts? Let's meditate on this today. And let's ask the Lord to forgive us. To forgive our weaknesses. To forgive us when we are stumbling blocks to, to His will. But ask in forgiveness. And may the Lord grant us to start over again. Amen.